Welcome back everybody. So as promised in last week's video, we're gonna be talking about the silver TJ today. For those of you who don't know, this is Jake's 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ. If you've watched some of our previous videos, you've probably seen Jake driving his 2000 Jeep Cherokee. That's his daily that he bought to drive while this is on jack stands in the shop. At first, the progress was pretty slow, but now it's picking up speed. As of filming this video, we've been in here for the past three days straight, I don't know, 12, 14 hour days working on this thing to get it done. Now in a previous YouTube video, I said that there would be an entire build series on this Jeep. It was going to be an eight part series that we're gonna be filming basically all our progress and you know, how to's and whatnot of what we're gonna be doing to the suspension on this thing. But that's not what we're gonna be doing anymore, unfortunately. And the reason behind that is basically we have a deadline to get this thing done and that is April 1st, which is, as many of you know, the week of Easter Jeep Safari in Moab, Utah. So right now it's getting close to the middle of February between now and April 1st, you know, that's not quite a lot of time for the amount of work that we're doing in this thing. So we started filming the first part in the series on this TJ and I was editing the video and then I started looking at a calendar and I was thinking, wow, we don't have a lot of time before Easter Jeep Safari for the amount of work we're doing, like I said, to the Jeep. And Ashley finally convinced me that my time would probably be better used actually working on the Jeep and getting it done rather than editing these videos. So that's why we're not gonna be having any build series on this Jeep which it was very frustrating for me at first because I was like, really excited to you know put out some in the shop content, some fabrication videos, but unfortunately we're not gonna be doing that for this. Now later in the year, we're gonna have other projects to do on this. We're gonna have you know tons of projects on the green Cherokee as well as the red Cherokee. We're gonna be doing something very similar to this in the red Cherokee. So in the future, there's gonna be a lot of in the shop content, a lot of fabrication videos, a lot like what this project is. Now Easter Jeep Safari is actually only gonna be the shakedown run for this Jeep. We have even bigger trips planned later in the year and we wanna make sure this Jeep is ready and you know, if we're gonna have any issues, we want it to be at Easter Jeep Safari or maybe even before that because we are gonna be going on a few smaller trips before then and we just wanna work out the kinks on it, make sure you know, we're not gonna have any problem on the longer trips. One of the bigger trips that we are extremely excited for is the Rubicon Trail. Now the Rubicon Trail is located near Lake Tahoe in California, and we're gonna be driving this Jeep along with the green Cherokee there. You know, it's like a 14, 15 hour drive or something like that. So we wanna, like I said, we wanna make sure we can work everything out beforehand so we don't have any issues on some of those bigger trips like Rubicon Trail. Now enough of that complaining, let's talk about the Jeep. Now the first thing that we did to this Jeep was build this rear bumper. Now this is a rear tire carrier bumper. It's a little different than what you usually see. It does not swing out to the side like most tire carriers do. This is what you would probably call a rear stinger style tire carrier bumper. Basically what's going on here is we have two hinges down at the bottom. They have rubber bushings at the bottom and we have two bushings at the top as well, but these actually have bolts right now, but they're gonna have big pins right here. So when Jake needs to fold this thing down, he can pull the pins out and this thing folds down like this. Now in here, Jake also has a CJ style tailgate, which is pretty cool because it actually folds down unlike the uh, TJ style tailgates that just fold to the side. So it kind of gives you a little more room, you know, you can put your uh, stove on there when you're camping and whatnot. Just uh, giving you more room anywhere you can on these little Jeeps is definitely helpful. Now, same thing with this tire. When this bumper folds down, we're gonna make it so it basically stays level as it is. And this acts basically as a huge table. You know, Jay can put stuff on top of it when we're camping, you know, that sort of thing. Now we pulled a lot of inspiration from uh, a lot of bumpers we've seen like this on the internet. You know, the biggest one being, uh, I think, Poison Spider. They make a very similar setup. Basically for the bottom here, Jake already had a, he had one of those <laughs> rear tire carrier bumpers that swung out. So we cut the hinges off that, we cut the latch off, and we kind of use that as a base because this is, I believe it was Smitty Build or something. It was already, you know, made out of 3 16th plate. So it was pretty thick and uh, pretty heavy duty to begin with. So it was a perfect base to start our bumper off on. From there, we went and made all these brackets. These brackets are a little bigger than they need to be. They're made out of, I believe, 5 16th. Most of this Jeep is 3 16th and quarter inch, what we've been building. But these brackets, it, it's what we had laying around, so that's what we used. So we went ahead and bent up all this DOM as well on the bender. This is all one and three quarter, 120 wall DOM. We got some 3 16 plate right here to basically act as a skid. So if Jake's climbing some rocks or something and maybe his Jeep slicks back, it is hitting this and not his tire. We also got a license plate mount up here and uh, enough room for a license plate light as well. You know, I think we covered all our bases on the bumper. It's already fully welded as well. So this part of the build is basically done right now. Now the biggest part of this build is the suspension that we're building. And before we did that, we decided to build the bumper just because 
this is a lot of weight. I know this is a 35 inch spare on an, it's an aluminum wheel, but it's a 17 inch wheel. It's a big setup. There's a lot of weight back here, a lot of weight behind that rear axle. So in theory, this Jeep's probably gonna be squatting back a little bit. That's why we started building the suspension after the bumper. So basically we can make up for any of that gained weight and make sure the Jeep's sitting level once the suspension is all done. Now to go along with the bumper, we needed a spot to mount these big brackets up top and basically all that's there is the tub and the tub it, you know, that's sheet metal. It's not good to weld to. We wanted this thing to be as strong as possible because this bumper is going to be taking hits from the back. And you know, it, if it was welded to the tub, it'd probably puncture right through the tub, no problem. So what we did was get this armor right here and we were able to weld the brackets directly to the armor. You know, this is 3 16 inch thick. So it's pretty thick and it can definitely take a beating. Now I believe this is from Metal Cloak. I, I that might be wrong and I'll have to ask Jake. Now this rear armor in particular accommodates four to five inches of rear stretch, I believe. And what that means and what we're doing to this Jeep is basically moving this rear axle back so we can have a longer wheelbase. Now for me in particular, I love having a long wheelbase. You know, with my Cherokee, they're, I think, the perfect wheelbase for something like that. And this is gonna be sitting around 99 inches of wheelbase. Now for those of you who don't know what a rear stretch is and why we needed this rear armor in particular, is we're gonna be moving the rear axle back, like I said. But with that, we needed the wheel vault to move back with the tire so we're not hitting the back of the Jeep tub right here. So basically what this armor does is it moves the whole wheel well back and then you trim some of the tub right here and then you get this final product. Now after finishing the bumper and the rear armor, we moved on finally to the suspension. Now we've ripped out absolutely everything from underneath this Jeep. We ripped out the short arms, brackets, skid plates, drive lines, axles, <laughs> absolutely everything because we're doing a lot of work underneath of here. After we got everything completely out from under here, we had a nice clean slate to work with and we started with building our own suspension and fabricating it. So the front suspension we're fabricating as a three link long arm setup, which is two lowers, one upper, completely untriangulated, and we're gonna be having a custom track bar under there as well. Basically the go-to suspension for these Jeeps, well, maybe right behind radius arms or something like that. So to accomplish all that, we went ahead and started making brackets for the frame. So this bracket we completely designed and cut out on the CNC, and it came out really well. You know, there's actually two brackets here. There's one on the outside of the frame right here. It just follows the frame right here. It, we have a cutout for the body mount, and then it curves right here um, with the frame. And we have one on the inside, and they are the same exact piece, except the inside does not have a cutout for the body mount. But yeah, we have four of those pieces, one for two for the other side as well. And they came out absolutely amazing. You know, we took a lot of measurements to be able to get this right. We had Joe come over with his, uh, you know, the green TJ that you've probably seen on this channel as well. What we used his Jeep for was basically to get a good idea of where the frame side link mount should be mounted to. Now, I really like the brackets that we cut out for this. One reason being is that this, this lower control arm mount on both sides is basically part of the entire bracket. You know, there's no just single mounted bracket welded to the frame that can break off, which does happen. So basically our Johnny joint that we have uh, a bunch of these, they're all one and a quarter inch Johnny joints. They're very stout links and basically a step up from Heim joints. This is gonna sit basically right inside of there and bolt right to there. Like I said, we don't have to worry about this breaking off or anything because this is all quarter inch plate and it's basically part of the entire bracket. Now one problem we did run into is this Johnny joint is actually a little wider than the TJ frame. I believe this is two and five eighths thick and the frame is about two and a half. So a way around that is we just spaced out this inner piece. What we did was cut out some eighth inch spacers. They're all two by two inches, I believe, and they're welded on the inside where all the bolts mount up to on this inside frame bracket. And that made the perfect mounting width for these Johnny joints. Now the upper link is a little different on the frame side. It is its own bracket, but it is welded to this quarter inch plate. So it's something I'm not gonna worry about. You know, I have confidence in my welds that they're not gonna, it's not gonna be breaking off or whatnot. Now also the way we designed this upper link mount on the frame side was that the bolt that the Johnny joint uses actually goes completely through the frame through this front hole right here on the bracket. So say if a weld actually did break on that bracket on the trail, that Johnny joint is still gonna be sandwiched against that frame. And I really don't think we're gonna be having any issues with that. Now we still have a lot of work to do on that front suspension area, like, you know, like these brackets and whatnot, but it's basically done. You know, We could mount links onto that right now and get the Jeep on its own weight. All we gotta do now to these brackets are add some more metal for some more brackets to add the skid plate underneath it. 
but we wanted to jump to the rear suspension next. So the rear suspension is something I'm very proud of. It was a lot of fun designing and fabricating and building this and cutting out on the CNC. You know, that CNC makes everything a lot easier and a lot more quicker and efficient. Now the rear suspension in this Jeep is a dual triangulated long arm setup, which means both the lower and the upper arms are triangulated. Now I've been wanting to build a suspension like this for a while. And my Red Cherokee, when I built it, I don't know, back in 2019 or so. So I don't know, three or four years ago, I took out the leaves and I built something similar to this, but I only made it a single triangulated long arm setup. Now that Jeep does great how it's built right now, but I'm curious to see how this is gonna perform on the trail and I'm assuming and hoping that it actually does better than my Red Cherokee because if so I'll be building the same setup in my Red Cherokee. Now the biggest difference between a single and a double triangulated suspension is that on a single triangulated suspension when you're flexing on the trail this rear axle is going to want to basically steer itself a little bit and on the road you could potentially get a little bit of a wandering when you're hitting just the right bump it's something that I don't see too often in my Red Cherokee. On a double triangulated setup like this, you're not gonna get any of that weird wandering. This rear axle is not gonna be steering itself when it's flexing. Now, one thing I learned that I don't like when building my Red Cherokee is just singular brackets welded to the frame. So in the rear suspension of my Red Cherokee, basically all like that, I have two upper link brackets just welded straight to the unibody. Well, it is plated, but then welded to those plates and they're just their own freestanding brackets. They're not part of any cross member. And the lower links are just brackets welded straight to the under of the unibody. Now, I don't like that aspect of that setup just because, you know, that's just a singular bracket. You know, all that's holding that on is welds, and I do trust my welds, but there is a potential for just hitting the right bump or hitting the right obstacle on a trail, you know, that right rock and busting that right off of the frame. And that's why we're building this Jeep how we did and all the brackets where all these four links come to at the frame side are all part of a cross member. So in theory, that should be a lot stronger. You know, we got a lot of half inch hardware holding this cross member in. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues with this setup, you know, breaking stuff off the frame or whatnot. So the first thing we had to do when building this rear suspension was center this axle inside this wheel well. Now I did that by going to the hardware store and buying this really cool laser level. Now I set this thing up and this thing shoots out two lasers, one going horizontal, one vertical. And by doing that, I was able to find the center of this wheel well, which I was able to transfer down to the frame here, then transfer down to the axle. So we did that to both sides. We made sure the axle was in the correct position, front to back. And then we went ahead and installed these plumb bobs right here. So those we installed onto the line that we made from the laser. And with the plumb bobs, we're able to center the axle left to right. After that, we made sure that pinion on the axle was pointed directly at the transfer case which is what you need when you have a double card and drive shaft. After we did that, we measured everything about a hundred times. You know, we literally spent about six hours making sure this axle was centered properly. And since we're stretching this Jeep and lifting it about two inches from where it was before, we're gonna have to get a custom drive shaft made. The little drive shaft that came out of this Jeep definitely will not work anymore. I think we literally have to lengthen it like six inches. So once we got the axle completely centered under the Jeep, you know, left, right, front to back, you know, pivot the pinion into the correct location, we went ahead and made some upper link mounts on top of the truss. We cut out those brackets on the CNC and they're not done yet. We're gonna add a top plate and we do have these rear plates right here that are gonna go on the back of it. They kind of have this oval for design purposes. We found out the exact degrees that they had to be and we tacked them into place. Now on a triangulated setup, whether it's single or double triangulated, you need to have at least 40 degrees of triangulation to keep this rear axle centered underneath the vehicle. With a triangulated setup like this or in the rear of my Red Cherokee, it gets rid of the need for a track bar, which is really nice because in a lot of instances, the track bar is one of the limited factors in how much your suspension can travel out on the trail. So we found out where those links had to be and we were able to find out where they had to be on the frame side. So we did the same thing with the lowers. So on these lower brackets, you want them to be basically as far out on the axle you, they can be and these brackets for the lower links we actually didn't make it's one of the only things we actually didn't make on the suspension but these i forget where they're from i think barnes drive.com or something but they're 20 degree brackets so they they're kicked in a little bit to allow for the perfect triangulation now with all the mounts on the axle side done we were able to find out where the links had to be positioned for the cross member side now one of the biggest challenges for a cross member like this is you're gonna run into issues like the transfer case being in the way, 
the exhaust being in the way, the drive line being in the way. So you gotta account for all that stuff, as well as up travel is a big thing for us. We're gonna have about four to four and a half inches of up travel, and the rest is all gonna be down travel. We spent basically six more hours determining whether we we're gonna have enough up travel, uh, make sure where those links were gonna be positioned where it's gonna be a good spot for them. We didn't wanna run into any issues hitting the floor when we're at full bump or something like that. If we had to, we would have just cut the floor, but you know, it's just one more thing that we don't have to do now. Now this cross member is something I'm super proud of. This thing completely bolts into the Jeep and it's held on by four half inch grade eight bolts on this side, four on the other side, and once we have the skid plate on there, and once we design it and cut it out, it's gonna be held on by the skid plate as well. So I think that's more than enough for this cross member. This cross member is built out of all quarter inch steel. We got the perfect amount of triangulation for all these brackets. The upper links are actually triangulated at 40 degrees, and the lowers are at 56. Now I don't think that's an issue having them at two different degrees. I didn't see anything online about that. Now I could have made these lowers 40 degrees as well. They just would have been not basically not pointing at the transfer case too much, but I wanted to get this correct angle down here for the, the cross member, you know? I wanted to be no more harsher than this angle that is on here now. So I just kicked them in a little bit so they're a little closer to the transfer case and it worked out perfectly. Right now the entire cross member is just tacked together. We still have a few pieces put on. I think there's one on this side. We gotta move some fuel lines and whatnot first. Then I can design that and cut it out on the CNC. And I believe uh, there's some front plates we're gonna be putting on here. So it's basically gonna be all boxed together. We're gonna have some uh, openings and whatnot to get the bolts through and stuff, but it came out really nice. And I, once we get it out of here and weld it completely together, we'll probably make another video and I'll show you guys that. Now, just a few more things on the setup to note. To get this setup to work, we had to remove the gas tank from underneath the TJ and we installed the fuel cell into the TJ. That's been done for a while. We did that literally, I don't know, three, four, five months ago. And we did that because we knew we were gonna be stretching the Jeep and in the stock location, that gas tank sits right where that rear axle has to sit now. Now the lower links, uh, you probably saw while we were under there, they're made of PVC right now. You know, I don't think that'll do all that great on the trail. So we're gonna be building the links here probably right after this video. And this is what they're gonna be built out of. This is a two inch quarter wall DOM and every single link on this Jeep is gonna be built with this. And we made sure that we're gonna have enough clearance for this stuff, cause this is incredibly large stuff. In a lot of instances, people will build the uppers uh, a little smaller than the lowers. So usually lowers are always two inch quarter wall and the uppers will be, I don't know, uh, probably one and three quarter, 120 wall. Uh, I've even seen them as small as one and a half. Uh, I think this is quarter wall. This is what Jake's gonna be using for his track bar. And you know, this is small stuff. It's a, uh, Definitely thick enough though. I don't know if I would use that for links, but we wanted this thing to be as strong as possible. So all our links are gonna be two inch quarter wall. Now the pro for two inch quarter wall is that it's incredibly strong. One of the downsides might be that you're at an incredible amount of weight and maybe you might be losing a little clearance. So if you're building something like this and you're gonna use two inch quarter wall for the uppers, just make sure you get the room for it first. So I also forgot to mention that the front is staying coils, just your regular coils. I think Jake has the plan to order some uh, dual rate metal cloak coils, you know, four and a half inch. And those are amazing coils. They do great on the trail. And more importantly, they ride amazing on the road. And for the rear, I got him to buy these. Now, <laughs> these are really nice and they cost a pretty penny. <laughs> now these are 12 by 2.5 Fox coilovers. And these are just so nice. I, I'm really glad I got to talking to Jake to doing this. This is probably the best thing we could have done with to this build. But basically, we're gonna be installing to the rear here. I think maybe I'll try to convince Jake to do some in the front eventually. But you know, you know, they definitely make a good dent in your wallet. So that'll probably be down the road, if anything. But yeah, so basically we're gonna be installing those coilovers into the rear of the Jeep. They're gonna sit slightly angled here. We gotta notch the frame and whatnot, build coilover tower for the top, build some mounts for the bottom, you know, brackets and whatnot. And we're probably gonna be doing that next weekend or actually right when you're watching this video because this video comes out on Sunday. <laughs> so if you're watching this video when it comes out on Sunday, while you're watching it, we're cutting this frame and notching it and building the brackets for those coilovers. So the axles that are going in this Jeep are not the ones that came out of it. In the previous video where we talked about making a whole series for this Jeep and whatnot, we talked about the axles. The front is a high pinion Dana 30 that we built. 
uh, from the factory. This had a low pinion DAN at 30. And we decided to go with the high pinion DAN at 30 just because we had it and it was free. It came from a buddy. The reason we went with just the DAN at 30 up front is because that's what everything else in this driveway has. You know, the red Cherokee, the green Cherokee, and they do pretty fine when you know how to use that skinny pedal. We went ahead and put the Artec Trust on that DAN at 30 along with a Yukon zip locker. Now for the rear of this Jeep, we have a Ford 88. I really love Ford 88. I got one in the red Cherokee and the green Cherokee. So I was able to convince Jake to put one under here. So we built that, we put the Artec truss on it. We put the Yukon C-Clip Eliminator kit in it. I love that kit, got it in my red Cherokee. Once again, I was able to convince Jake to do it. This axle does not have a locker in it yet. Jake says he wants to see how the Jeep performs with just the front locker. And then down the road, we can go ahead and install a rear locker. So I think that's basically everything that we've done to the Jeep so far. You know, maybe it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's definitely a lot of work to do something, a project like this, especially when you have a deadline to get it done by. Just this weekend, we definitely got a lot done. We made that whole cross member. That cross member and these brackets over here did not exist before this weekend. So I think we're gonna spend another weekend basically doing as much as we can to this Jeep so we can get it out of the shop and get it on its own weight. So I know this was maybe a little weird of a video, just a little update video. Like I said, I was really excited to be able to show you guys this build process, but unfortunately it's not gonna happen. But let me know if there's any aspects of this build that you want me to talk a little bit more of, you know, maybe show you a little bit more of it. But just remember, in the future, we're gonna be doing a lot of work it's very similar to this, to the Cherokees, maybe a few other projects we got in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. It helps us a lot with the weird YouTube algorithms that we still don't understand yet. Go ahead and leave us a comment of what you think about the build so far and what you wanna see in the next update video on this Jeep. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you out on the trail and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.